Hello everyone. Now we will discuss on the topic ecology, environment and biodiversity. In the previous class, we have seen that nature has a cyclic process which is regenerative in nature and any disturbances in the natural system is accommodated automatically by the natural processes up to certain extent. We have also come to know that in nature living and non-living elements of environment, environment coexist and interacts each other. And this interaction of living organisms with non-living components is the matter of ecology and the systems is also called as ecological system or ecosystem. And we have seen that in nature living organisms may be of different types or you can say that diversity is the beauty of nature. Different species are available and living together okay. and this stable diversity is very, very essential for the working of the ecosystem or the nature. And this stable biodiversity or stable ecosystem gives number of services to the societies, to the human, human society as well as different living organisms at their levels. But as I mentioned in the previous class that the ever increasing population growth and the greed of the human being is disbalancing this cyclic processes. As a result, the naturally healing is not taking place as a result the climate change and other different impacts like global warming, health issues like say pandemic all those things are coming up because of that. So, in this class we will discuss what is the ecology and ecosystem, components of ecosystem, then operation of ecosystem energy flow in ecosystem, food chain, food web, ecological pyramids, biogeochemical cycles, stability and biodiversity of ecosystem, ecological services and biodiversity and alteration of ecosystem and ecosystem restoration. So, we will be discussing on this topic in this class. You see what is ecology? and ecosystem. So, ecology is the study of the interrelationship between plants and animals that live in a particular physical environment. Okay. So, the ecologists study organisms ranging from the various levels of organization like say individual, population, community and then ecosystem then biome and biosphere. So, these are the level of organizations. Now, we will see what are those. So, species that group of similar organisms that can breed and produce fertile offsprings and then population group of organisms all of the same species which interbreed and live in the same area. So, this is one tiger population community and assemblage of different populations that live together. So, we have here deer, some other animals etcetera and plants everything are available here. So, that is a community in that community. So, some species are available in some community that is not that may not be available in other community as well. And then ecosystem collection of organisms that live in a place with the non-living environment. Then biome. What is this? In a group of ecosystems with the same climate and dominant communities that is biome. 
and number of biomes will give ultimately the biosphere. So, total place where living organisms coexist with the non-living elements. So, that is the biosphere. Okay, so, these are some uh, definition related to the ecosystem. Now, components of ecosystem just like components of environment the functional components are also the components of ecosystem and we can get it here biotic component like an abiotic component and sunlight the energy that is very very important as already have discussed in the previous class also. So, biotic plants and animals and abiotic components are air, water, mineral and soil. So, how the ecosystem operates or works? The energy comes from the sun and then that energy is taken up by the plants and they produce food and that is the primary production and then consumption of producers by the consumers that is the secondary productivity and then different types of consumers we can get. After the date of producers and consumers complex organic compounds are degraded and finally, converted into elemental form okay, and are suitable for neutralizations by the producers. So, this is the operations of the ecosystem. Now, it is called that sun is the source of all energy in the world. Okay. So, basically the solar energy is stored in the food by the plant. Okay. So, photosynthesis we know it very well carbon dioxide H 2 energy that will give us C 6 H 12 O 6 and this C 6 H 12 O 6 will be consumed by different consumers and during respiration this will be degraded to carbon dioxide and H 2 and energy the reverse reaction. So, we are getting the energy which was stored here that we are getting energy and by this we are doing different work all living organisms are doing work by this energy. Now, this energy which is generated in all living organism we can compare with the IC engine. So, in IC engine combustion process takes place. So, this is CO 2 and H 2 here also we get carbohydrate to CO 2 and H 2 H 2 O. So, the difference is temperature and the mechanism. So, that way the energy is generated in the ecosystem and transferred from one level to other that is producer to consumer. So, then autotrophs and heter heterotrophs there are another two terms which are related with this uh, ecosystem. Autotrophs, autotrophs means the plants and plants which can produce food themselves. Okay, they do not depend on any other organisms for their food, but heterotrophs are dependent on autotrophs for their food or for their energy. Okay. So, here the solar energy is coming. So, producers that is your autotrophs they are producing this and consumers are taking this one okay. and then after the date of this both it is coming to the decomposers. So, they are converting this biomass into elemental compositions. So, again uh, this is the working of the ecosystem. Another important information we are getting here in this ecosystem you know that water, nutrients, carbon dioxide, sunlight that is giving us food and energy stored in food and that food energy is transported at each level that is producer level first degree of level that is your producers and second secondary level that is consumers and first degree consumer, second degree consumers. Okay. So, this is called your vegetations and then it is herbivores. So, these species and these living organisms are dependent on this your the plants for their energy and then herbivores to carnivores. So, these are dependent on the herbivores and other carnivores that is degree 2 and degree 3 you can say another they, these other carnivores can take both the carnivores and herbivores also omnivorous we can say like this. So, here one information we are getting if the food energy transferred at each level this here it is 40 then 42 next it is coming 4 
then here it is coming 0 0.4, here it is coming 0 0.04. So, one tropic level, so lower to upper level if we go, so energy availability is reduced 10 times. So, we can see that uh, we the, the energy flow will be like a pyramid. If we present it in a figure, then you can get in a pyramid and we will discuss that. And another important information here we are getting that food wave and food chain. Here we, we have seen that this is dependent on that, this carnivorous dependent on herbivorous, others are dependent on both herbivorous and carnivorous. So, one link is there, so that is called food chain. So, these are related with their energy or food, so that is the food chain. Now, food chain and food wave, they both are the part of the ecosystem. So, here for lower level to upper level, so we are plants and then herbivorous, then carnivorous that way. But here some insects that can be taken up by bird, it can be taken up by toad, many and then this can be taken up by some other animals. Okay. So, there will be some uh, you know wave of connection, so that is called food wave, not only through chain in a linear chain it is a wave, the interconnection is also possible. So, this is there in the ecosystem and as I mentioned that if you go for that trophic level, each step in a food chain of a food wave that is called the trophic level. So, from the from the autotrophic to heterotrophic and your primary consumers, secondary consumers, tertiary consumers, if we go up the num energy content also reduces, number reduces. Okay. So, for some example is their energy pyramid. So, primary producers, primary consumer, secondary tertiary like this already you have discussed in the previous slide. Now, we will discuss on the some cycles for the maintenance of the you know abiotic components like say water, soil and air we have maintained. So, some other elements which are very very essential for the growth of the animals and plants those elements are also available in the ecosystem through cyclic processes that part we are going to discuss here now that is biogeochemical cycles. So, number of cycles are there like say water cycle, carbon dioxide cycle, nitrogen cycles and phosphorus cycles. So, those are very very important cycles which are available in nature in ecosystem for the management or to ensure the availability of these elements to the living organisms. So, if we do not disturb the natural cycle, then there is no problem, but human greed, human uh, development, societal development, you know that is disturbing these cyclic processes, that is why the all negative impacts is coming to the environment. Now, with respect to water cycle we see, let us see in case of ocean we have around 97.24 percent of water, remaining 2.14 percent of water is our fresh water and out of this fresh water we are very limited say uh, out of this this 2.14 percent of this fresh water around 89 percent is of this ice and snow. And around say 12 percent like this, we, we are getting say lake water and ground water. So, lake water is very very less amount which is available. So, this is this distribution as per nature, it can serve the purpose of the ecosystem, if we can restrict ourselves from our greeds okay, by the name of development. You see how nicely it is done. So, these waters are available and due to the heat from the sun, it is vaporized from the sea, it goes off and in the air, it in the atmosphere, it, it, it comes as a cloud and then again precipitation takes place okay, both in sea and in the land also. So, these precipitated water comes and maintain the water level which is required for the normal life in the ecosystem. So, this is our water cycle which is available and 
which is working in nature nicely. If you see the biogeochemical cycles that is carbon cycle. So, here also the ocean is the reservoir. Okay. You see here 37,000 unit if we have carbon dioxide in the deep ocean then 1000 will be in the surface ocean and 10,000 will be in the fossil fuels and soil will be having 2300, 800 in atmosphere. So, these are the availability and out of this 800 which is available in atmosphere our plants take up and 550 unit is coming in the plant biomass. So, this has some uh, distribution I mean if this cycle works nicely then the environmental quality will be maintained, but human activities is creating some other addition of carbon dioxide to the environment. As a result this the, the nature which is available and the, the carbon cycle that is not able to accommodate that carbon dioxide additional carbon dioxide which is coming into the atmosphere to convert it into other forms. So, from atmosphere to sea or any soil or fossil pool. So, that is not immediately converted or distributed that is the major reason why we are facing the global warming like this. Now, we see the nitrogen cycle. So, in nitrogen cycle again nitrogen is available in the air we know that around 79 to 80 percent is our nitrogen. So, that nitrogen is taken up by the plants and this there are some microorganisms nitrogen fixation they are coming into the soil from the air like say ammonia to nit nitrous oxide. So, nitrate so that is nitrification and some denitrification is also there. So, that microbes are also there those are working on the nitrate and then nitrite and nitrous oxide and then ultimately again the nitrogen. So, cyclic process some group of microorganisms working on it it is converting nitrogen to nitrate and some group of organisms are also working on the reverse direction that is nitrate to nitrogen. So, both are available in the nature and some man made activities are also there we are taking nitrogen from it and we are producing fertilizer ammoniacal ammonia based fertilizer that is urea ammonia etcetera. So, here nitrogen is taken from the air and any reactions a pyrolysis reactions again nitrogen is taken up from the air okay, or any other experimentations or analytical purpose again nitrogen is taken up from the air and this nitrogen you know assimilation takes place through this uh, when ammonia to amino acids the plants also takes nitrogen and forms amino acids okay, and the protein. So, that way that is also coming to the animals and uh, nitrogen cycle works on that way. Okay. And another is nitrogen you know due to the use of excessive fertilizer nitrogen is coming into the water stream surface water. So, when it is coming in surface water the eutrophication is taking place. So, eutrophication is taking place means the algal blooming is taking place. So, algal algae which is growing at the surface of the lake. So, they are these are not allowing uh, light to penetrate or air to penetrate through it. So, as a result DO level is reduced and the living uh, fishes and other aquatic plants and animals basically the an animals are being under threat. So, that way uh, the human activities are basically responsible for the breaking this nitrogen cycle and any other biogeochemical cycles and which is hampering the normal working of the ecosystem as a result we are getting the pollution. Similarly, for phosphorus cycle we know phosphorus is present in terms of phosphate rock. So, phosphate rock is taken off and then it is used for the fertilizer productions then it is given to the plants the plants takes it okay. and fertilizer runoff comes to the water again there will be some eutrophications in case of phosphorus also the leak the, uh, the, the, micro, the algae will also grow by that way and this 
weathering and erosion can also helps to to the return of this phosphorus to the water and the sediments. So, that way the process is there, but if we can maintain here, we are not using much fertilizer, then phosphorus will not come into the systems automatically it will be uh, it will be in recycle mode and the environment will not be affected. So, that is why nowadays organic fertilizer uh, use is being encouraged. Now, we will see the stability and biodiversity of ecosystem. Okay. So, we have seen that the diversity is the beauty of nature and all organization or trophic levels we have seen different type of species are available and if it is available then this is a stable system. So, stable ecosystem that withstand external stress such as pollution, construction etcetera. For example, tropical rainforest and biodiversity is the variation of life at all levels of biological organization. Now, <coughs> this one is your stable ecosystem and little diverse ecosystem and ecological succession, there are two similar terms we should know. So, that is little diverse ecosystem that is disappearance of group of organisms from food wave severely disrupt the ecosystem. For example, lake and river ecosystems are stable, but due to pollution and lower DO level only lower species can survive. Just I had given some example that in case of lake, so if eutrophication takes place then DO level will be reduced and plant uh, your aquatic plants basically like say fishes, aquatic animals basically say fishes will be in danger, but very small species can be survived. And now this is one little diverse ecosystem that is not normally working, it is diverted to some extent, but some living organisms can also exist in the system. But ecological succession, well balanced ecosystem can also change over time that is called succession. Like say lake to shallow lake the deposition due to the deposition of silt, then marsh, meadow and then hardwood forest, it can be converted to hardwood forest and all these can be affected by human activities such as pollution. Now, we will see the ecological services and biodiversity. So, as I mentioned the stable ecosystem will be highly diversified, all organization levels will be having diversified species and all those diversified species will do their work and indirectly provide some services to the human society as well as other living organisms as well. Okay. So, we will be getting the benefits due to ecosystem services, our socio-economic systems will be strengthened by these okay, ecosystems use and management other capital inputs like say number of benefits we can get from these services like say uh, it ecosystem ensures our nutrition, clean water and air, okay, health, safety, security and enjoyment and it gives us economic value, it helps us to improve our economy, our health and other societal values as well. So, if we see the ecosystem functions, then biodiversity is very, very essential it will be having genetic diversity, species richness and then biotic interactions, biophysical structures, functional traits and ecological processes. So, there will be some good interactions and interrelations between living and non-living organisms and also in between living organisms there will be good relationship okay, and interactions. So, if we can maintain this certainly or automatically our society will get the benefits from it, but to maintain this diversity in the ecosystem <coughs> we need some regulations, we need some framework policies okay. then only it is possible because the increasing population and the greeds of the human being have already damaged the ecosystem diversity in many places. 
So, we have to prevent it and in to some extent we have to restore the damaged ecosystem as well for our future and clean environment. And you know we have to be more responsible and we have to all the stakeholders has to be more responsible to achieve this biodiversity and maintain this biodiversity in future as well. And as I mentioned that the cyclic processes are working nicely, but in some cases because of the population growth and human greed that, we, that this system is not working well and it is being uh, disbalanced. So, how the balance of ecosystem is altered we see already we have discussed because our main objective is the our society and human well being. We are more concerned with it and for that we take the services from ecosystem, but at the same time we are in many cases we are not able to protect the biodiversity of the ecosystem. Okay. There are many direct and indirect drivers for these changes in the ecosystem. So, direct you see here the direct drivers of changes land use change. So, urbanization, road constructions all those things are going on. So, land use change and then species introductions and removal, external inputs, harvesting, natural and biological events, climate change. So, all those are your direct drivers. The ecosystem when it is affected we have to restore it by these drivers itself. We have to take policies on the basis of this direct drivers and also the indirect drivers like you know, demographic, economic, socio-political, science and technology, cultural and religious factors we have to consider and we that way only the restorations of the damaged ecosystems and the uh, conservations of the existing ecosystem can be possible. If we see the example according to the millennium ecosystem assessment 60 percent of the world's ecosystem services have been degraded over the past 50 years. And you see since many ecosystem services are received for free we often take them for granted until the ecosystem is degraded and the services are declining or at risk. Decision makers and institutions need to develop creative ways of protecting ecosystem services. So, ecosystem restoration means assisting in the recovery of ecosystems that have been degraded or destroyed as well as conserving the ecosystems that are still intact. And this can be done by passive restoration or active restoration mode. So, passive restoration means destroyed sites recover naturally through ecological succession and active restoration is by human activities by rehabilitation and land stabilization for restorations of the soils or water's original chemical, biological and physical characteristics. For some example, addition of lime to improve the soil pH if some soil pH is reduced due to some acidic effect. So, we can add some alkali. So, the pH will be increased. So, that way that will be restored to its initial position and stemming the flow of fertilizers to artificially enriched soil or water, inoculating soils with beneficial microorganisms and tailing to improve aeration and root penetration. So, these are some examples of your active restoration process. Active restoration by restoring the plant community also another approach. So, when uh, after the site is prepared then the restorationists generally select seeds, seedlings or cuttings for revegetation and the restorations of the land can take place. Active restoration can be possible by participations of the all stakeholders. If we want to restore a degraded ecosystem it is very essential that all stakeholders should understand the importance of it and be responsible to restore it. So, then it will be highly effective and successful. Some examples of your uh, natural 
restoration or passive restoration is North America's North America's eastern deciduous forests. This is the example of passive restoration largely cleared for agriculture between the 17th and 19th centuries. This land was abandoned as agriculture moved west and the eastern United States industrialized. Okay. So, after tilling ceased, forest began to recover with no active restoration efforts and today they cover millions of acres. These forests are still relatively young and are missing a few key elements. And another example is your calcareous grasslands in Europe. So, here also in part of northern Europe calcareous grasslands are being restored on land previously managed for agriculture. These sites were historically characterized by nutrient poor open acidic soil supporting a unique flora and restoration practices after years of fertilization for crops open involve some form of soil impoverishment and acidification followed by over sowing with native plant species. Many of these sites are now mature and retain their restored plant associations. And in India also some efforts are there for the ecosystem restoration like say some flagship programs in India with restoration targets are national afforestation program which is focused on the rehabilitation of degraded forests and afforestation around forests. And national mission for a green India under the national action plan on climate change that is NAPCC which is aimed at improving and increasing tree cover as a climate adaptation and mitigation strategy. National biodiversity action plan to implement strategies for the reduction in rates of degradation, fragmentation and loss of natural habitats. Mahatma Gandhi national rural employment guarantee schemes that is MGNREGS recognition that natural resources are intrinsically linked to rural livelihoods, plantations and rejuvenation of water bodies subcomponents through which provisions for livelihoods in afforestation, tree plantation, horticulture and constructions of new ponds have been made. National Rural Livelihood Mission NRLM that bifurcated into farm and non-farm livelihoods focus on interventions to enhance natural capital and present opportunities for ecosystem restoration. So, up to this in this class, thank you very much for your patience.